It's our problem, Eamon, because we have people crossing the channel to get to the UK from coming from parts of the world which are not secure, which do not have economic... But if we didn't have a foreign aid budget, we'd have more for a defence budget, wouldn't we, to keep them out? No, because, of course, we, if, we, if we didn't have a foreign aid budget, one third of the foreign aid budget last year was spent on hosting refugees in the United Kingdom. We would have to find that money to host those refugees. So the foreign else. aid it's budget is actually budget. spent here on refugees. A third of the budget last year was last spent year. on refugees here. But the point is, we're sending money to India, who have just put a rocket on the moon. We're sending money to China, who have one of the largest economies in the world. We're sending money to places that, frankly, they don't need our money. We've been taking for well, months. We're also sending money, Matthew, to countries like Yemen, to countries like Somalia, to end FGM. I'm not saying all the foreign aid budget is spent in the right way. It should be targeted to the parts of the world most in need. We should not be sending money to India and China. But the idea that we should not send foreign aid money to any country in the world when there are plenty of countries... But Albie, what country do you live in? This one's broke. This country's broke. Who's going to send us money? We have more than enough money that we spend in our own well, Why have we got homelessness? Why have we got drug problems? Why have we got unemployment? Why have we got um, the schools that we can't rebuild? So that was very nice while it lasted, but now it's time to spend it here. Because we're spending money in the wrong places, Eamon. The biggest, one of the biggest spends on the Exchequer is, of course, the triple lock on pensions. That's the biggest outgoing. Oh, yeah, so we just let our pensioners money. starve and 22, die after working all 22, the years of their 22, lives. So we'll just give it away for some girl band in Africa then. What I think, I, I think what we should do is should look at the amount. Well, well hang on, let's not all speak at once. <laughs> Abi was just finishing his point there about wealthy pensioners often being millionaires, so perhaps people should forego their yeah. pensions in those instances. But let's hear back um, from Matthew. I mean, Matthew, there were a lot of raised eyebrows when the foreign aid budget was hugely reduced, and we actually created the foreign aid budget as one of our international duties. Uh, a lot of people raised eyebrows, international standing. We're always talking about that with this government. Does it send out the right message to the rest of the world if we're pulling up the draw? bridge and saying not interested isolationism that's what we're about well we're not pulling up the drawbridge because we spent 12 and a, 12 billion pounds around that figure in 2022 and that's only down from 15 billion in 2019 so it's a pretty penny that we're spending i think what albie and i are both in agreement of is we need to look at where we're sending this money so let's stop sending money to india let's stop spending money to china that frees up some money to spend here at home Let's put Great Britain first. That's the point of this entire channel. We want Great Britain first. Let's build more hospitals. Let's build new schools. Let's fill those job vacancies that we've got in this country. Let's train up our future generations and give people the future that they deserve. Why are we spending money on countries that are sending mo uh, rockets to the other side of the moon? Or countries that have terrible human rights records like China, but then, hey, we'll give you some money anyway because you've got one of the largest economies in the world. We are utterly utterly not focused on this country. We need to focus on the United Kingdom. We need to focus on us. Let's fix the problems here before we try and fix everyone else's problems. Albie? I just want to dispel this myth that spending money on international aid is not beneficial to people here in the United Kingdom. As I mentioned before, the reason why people are fleeing parts of the world and coming to the UK is because these parts of the world aren't secure, there's no economic opportunity, and there's no reason for those people to stay in those countries. If the international aid budget is spent in the right way, it could actually reduce the need for people to leave their countries in the first place and then come to the United Kingdom. Also, if we think about the parts of the world where China and India are really developing new relationships. We're thinking about Africa, we're thinking about South America, we're thinking about parts of South Asia. Now, China and India aren't cutting their international aid, they're enhancing their international standing with international aid, with investments in these countries, and we are seeing a, a, a real well, this is the nonsense the of it. We're giving money West, to countries who are giving money to other India. countries. Eamon, I've already said we shouldn't be giving money to China and India. So if we can park that point, because we all agree on it, the point the, the, that I'm making the, the, is you say part we are the point, spending the money we're still sending them that money. Be advantageous. Th th this is the point about foreign aid cuts. This is what we've got so to get we, our mind in. Well, we've all we're said still we sending, sending that money. It, so we can probably move on from that yeah. point. So let's, let's raise Would you that run point your like, house but, like but this? If you were running your own budget at home, because... would you be running your budget? I mean, you know all about homelessness and um, uh, things, things that go on here and poverty and whatever. So would you be giving money that you need to be spending on your own home to someone else's home? 
Eamon, a third of the budget is spent in the UK. I've already told you. Yeah, but we've already yeah, I'm not stupid, mate. I'm not stupid. I understand why India. the budget is spent in the UK, but what is it spent on? It's spent on housing migrants and uh, illegal immigrants in this country. And I'm sure, uh, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this one, that's not the way you want to see your budget being spent. No, I mean, as a local councillor, we have to focus on every single penny. We have to find every single penny we can to keep the budget in balance and, and deliver local services for local people. We're not spending our money on mega billion pound projects other, elsewhere in the world mm. that we will never see something from today. We might see something from it in decades, years time, but we're not going to see anything today. Right, but Matthew, do you accept the point that Albie's making that actually by withdrawing funding from many of these unstable countries, we create more of a problem for this country, that you have an increase in these people trying to get away from these dangerous situations, illegally crossing the channel? Do you not accept that actually if you invest... We in will money, never be able to fix that. We Matthew. will never have a enough money to fix that. No, so, com completely. We, we, look, we need to stop trying to fix other people's problems. We need to focus it's, on it's this country. Problem, and focus no, 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 I'll tell you what our problem our is. Here. Our problem is concrete beams falling on children and school teachers' heads, and it's going to take £11 billion to put that right. But oddly enough, for foreign aid's budget, is about exactly the same, £11 billion. I, I, our problem I is that we are is that we are not spending our money in the most effective way, and I'm afraid the state pension going to pensioners who are millionaires, which make up 22 percent of pensioners. Stop talking about pensions. You see, when you're old, money. when you're old, mate, and you have got to pay for a carer, and you've got to pay I mean, for a Zimmer free, and you've got to pay for everything. But it depends what millionaire is. Half, half of it will go to the government anyway. So stop stigmatising old people as being millionaires. Stop stigmatising the interest national aid budget is being pointless. No, I think it will, I'm actually. Just where I'm, I'm quite happy to. where the money could come from as an alternative to cutting the international aid budget. You don't like my idea, I don't like your idea. Well, I think the choice is then, do we pick pensioners or do we pick foreign aid budgets that we might not see anything for for 20, 30 years? And in my point of view, do we, we pick, pick our own country pensioners and our pensioners. Or the poorest people in the world? Millionaire pensioners, 22% of Some pensioners. of the poorest people the in the world live in, in this world. country. Well, he was talking about the wealthy I'm ones. I'm talking about we're not redirecting agree. money from millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll, so we'll... pensioners, everybody watching out there, um, Albie says it's more likely that you're a, you're a millionaire. You're a millionaire pensioner. Yeah, I hope, you, I hope you get to experience what a millionaire pensioner feels like someday. Mary says, sorry, I disagree with Albie. He's talking, oh, well, can't say uh, he's talking about economic growth in other countries. We don't appear to have any economic growth ourselves. Surely foreign aid should come after we have covered our own costs. Great Britain is no longer great. Um, Jane says, stop foreign aid, we need money here, country's broken, totally agree, enough is enough. And that goes on and on and on and on and on. Trim down. But what about, where would you settle for? Would you settle for a reduction, Alby, in foreign aid, trimming down the foreign aid list, as Thomas suggests? Absolutely. I thought Rishi Sunak was totally right to reduce the foreign aid budget during COVID because we needed to redirect more of that money to the UK when the government was spending to get us through the COVID crisis. I thought that was the right policy. Of course, it can be tailored, but I would be totally against completely cutting the foreign aid budget to spend money at home when there are other efficiencies that can be made with our annual budget, notably with the state pensions going to 22% of millionaires.